the minimum frequency of light needed to emit electrons from a certain metal surface. That's what we call threshold frequency. The answer to 10.1. Let's look at 10.2.1. Let's calculate the work function of cesium. Let's calculate the work function of cesium. Let's go through our information and see what we have. How can we potentially calculate the work function of cesium? So we have a photoelectric cell which is connected in a circuit. The lowest frequency of light that will emit electrons from its cesium surface is 5.1 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So we have the threshold frequency which is equal to 5.1 times 10 to the power 14 hertz. Right, and then we can calculate the work function using the threshold frequency because the work function is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the threshold frequency. So this will be equal to H Planck's constant Obviously, it's a constant as the name says. It is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied by the threshold frequency, which is 5.1 times 10 to the 14. And this is equals to 3.38 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. We have our work function. This this is the minimum amount of energy required for an electron to be emitted. 10.2.2. Uh, we calculate in the amount of energy carried by the incident photons of violet light. So we have violet light of wavelength 400 nanometers. Uh, that is incident on our cesium surface. So the amount of energy, energy, if you are given a wavelength will be equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by the wavelength. If you're given the frequency, then it's just Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. But I'm sure you know that. Uh, again, Planck's constant, that is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied by C, which is speed of light. 3 times 10 to the power 8 divided by the wavelength of the incident light of the violet light which is 400 times 10 to the minus 9. Now it's just a matter of putting that in your calculator to get 4.97 times 10 to the minus 19 joules to the minus 19 joules let me just write that again to the power minus 19 joules so let me show you something this is the amount of energy from the light that is incident on our surface and then this is the amount of energy that is required so you can see that the amount of energy that is incident is greater than the amount of energy that is required so when those photons are ejected from the surface they're going to have a kinetic energy they're going to have some form of kinetic energy right 10.2 Point three, the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons emitted from the cesium surface when violet light shines on it. So now we actually need that kinetic energy, which I was talking about in 10.2.2. Well, our energy is equal to H multiplied by the frequency of which the frequency can be C divided by wavelength. But then at the same time, our energy is equal to the work function plus ek max plus ek max so what i've realized is that uh, some examiners if you uh, omit this max here on your ek you actually lose a mark so yeah be aware of that and don't lose mark unnecessarily so in our equation we have the energy of the incident light and then we have the work function of our metal surface. Now we need EK max. It's just a matter of direct substitution and making EK max the subject of the formula. Solving for X basically. Easy max. So EK, uh, not EK max, but then the energy 
is equal to 4.97 times 10 to the minus 19. This will be equal to the work function, which is 3.38 times 10 to the minus 19 plus ek max plus ek max uh, for the faint hearted ones we just take in this term to the left hand side and we are done with our equations right and then if you subtract 3.38 times 10 to the minus 19 from 4.97 times 10 to the minus 19 you're gonna get ek max so we have ek max being equals to 1.59 1.59 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that is the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons that have been emitted from the cesium metal surface when violet light is incident.